Oh, Brent, you were not. So what you're saying is you were not recording all the good stuff that Jeff was just saying right there. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that, Jeffrey. You're going to have to uh, bring it back up again. Guys, uh, interesting topic today. And thanks for hanging out with us. Another episode of the Gold Ball Hunting Podcast. And uh, I want to talk today about, we're watching the French. Here it is, episode number 141. 141 comes out on a, uh, I hear, oh, I hear the whistle blowing. I'm putting my hand over the mic here to see if that helps. No, it's fine. Yeah, That's but, cool. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see, 141 comes out in a couple of days. Eh, doesn't matter what day it is. Today, Saturday, I guess that would be Monday. Um, so we're watching the French Open today, and and let's see, Osaka goes down 4-2 and two to Sinakova. I know I'm butchering the name. Um, Katarina, who's ranked currently number one in the world in doubles, and she just has her biggest singles result of all time. And the thing that impressed me with her is that she allowed she allowed Osaka to participate in missing some some shots, and right. the, in the first two rounds as we were talking about, Osaka I think went three sets in both of those and was down. One of them she was down, at, you know, she was two points away. I think against Azarenka she was just a, you know maybe a handful of points away from losing the right. match. And uh, I didn't watch the Azarenka match, but the one before. It just seemed to me like when the girl had the chance that she did not believe that her opponent might participate in, right. in, in her winning, you know, one or, one, or, one, or, one or two more points. Today was right. a different deal. I mean, this girl just ran everything down. She ran everything down. She made Osaka hit one more ball. And she didn't hit a ton of winners. You know, she... Right. She, she she allowed her opponent to touch the ball. So the other cool thing today was watching, um, is it Sophia Kennan? Sasha Sophie Kennan? Kennan, yeah. Yeah. So, so, Sophie. Sophie, is that it? Or I, I think it's Sophia. Yeah, that's anyway, it. yeah. you know, she won, uh, she won the women's challenger in Berkeley last summer in July, right? So what is this, May? Ten months ago. She's basically right. still in the minor leagues, right? I mean, she. I mean, she'd made some you know big main draws before, but she was still trying to get enough points. And ever since she won that tournament in Berkeley last July, I mean, she has been on like a straight line up. And today she beat Serena. And so I'm kind of curious what you think, Jeff, on a couple things. Number one, look, I can't believe that her strokes are like you know night and day. And I'm talking about Kennan, that her strokes are completely different today than they were 10 months ago when she won Berkeley. Right. So something's happened here, right? <laughs> She's something. And we all know it's belief, right? It's just kind of that, that, <clears throat> right. that belief. But you brought up something cool that, the, you know, before I hit the recording button about how she or what she does after a point, win or lose, and maybe this is what she's, maybe this is the difference Right now, from what it was ten months ago, where it's kind of like, I, I, you know, I'm playing the finals of Berkeley today. Well, I'm playing, I'm playing Serena on, you know, at Roland Garros in the French. There's no difference. Right. Right. I mean, obviously, there's a huge difference. But go ahead and describe to the to the listeners, well, I, I the viewers, the, the kind, first of, thing that... kind of what you saw today. Yeah, the first the first thing I noticed, um, and I just saw the end of the match, and so I'm assuming she she did this the whole match, uh, which was why she kind of marched marched her way through the match. Um, but when the point was over, win or lose, um, she literally just turned and marched back to the baseline or wherever she needed to go to get the balls or or a towel off or whatever. And then march back up. She was very close. I know she had her visor. I don't know if the way she it's the way she wears it all the time. It was very tight over the you know. It was like she was in her own little. It's, it's a little tunnel. Little, it's a little tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was in her own little bubble. But yeah. um, I was impressed with the fact that she literally. I mean, that's the word. My, the word that comes to mind is she marched from the end of the point to get ready to start the next point. She marched with confidence and strong, and kind of like. 
I'm not going to hang around and wait for any drama or anything to happen from the other side of the court, whether it's Serena or somebody else. And obviously at Roland Garros Grand Slam on the big stage, there's always opportunity for, for drama. And she just marched her way. She finished, whether she won the point, lost the point. When she hit a big winner and the crowd would go crazy, she just like head down, marched to the other, like da, 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 just all business. And what was really impressive was um, her first match point. She missed a forehand cross court into the tape about four, four or five shots into the rally. And she had a moment where you could see she was a, like a little deflated. And then immediately she like almost put her hands up. I can't what gesture she used, almost caught herself and just said, like, stop it. And then totally realigned herself and got back to marching over. Give me the damn balls. Let's, Let's go. go. I got work to do. And she came right back, um, played a beautiful point, just just unleashing on the ball. And again, not hitting sidelines, but just unleashing on the ball and, you know, constructing a great as, point as you say inflicting a little bit of pain every time right and then um so now she's up she gets her second match point uh she serves uh serena makes the return she hits a heavy ball basically up the center of the court into serena's backhand serena launches it about two feet deep match over yeah but for me the most impressive part was the fact that after she lost that first match point she didn't crumble into woe is me. She immediately, I mean, you can see her physically catch herself and literally like slap herself in the face and go, hey, yeah. snap out of it. Enough. Let's get down to business here. We got work to do. Yeah. Well, and look, she just marched over there and got back to work. Uh, our last episode, we talked about basically the theme was the question, uh, why can't I just choose to be confident? Right. You know, rather than choose to be something else. And we all have choices. I mean, I don't care. I don't care what's happened. I don't care how far up you are in a match. And we see this all the time. Guys get up a set and a break. And they just they just choose not to be confident at that at that moment. Right. And other guys lose the first set. They're down a break and they go, let's get to work. Let's get to work. Right. And so I think for the rest of us, I mean, I can see where I can see where Kenan is now in the last 10 min months. Has, has really sort of probably, whether she's done any training, who knows? I don't know if anyone's going to ask her that question. I'd like to ask her that question if I was if I was right. Joel, if I was Joel Drucker. Joel, are you listening? Can you get in the press conference and ask some questions for us? Um, but I would like to ask her, you know, what, what mental shift have you made? What have you, and not, right. not, not shift as much, what have you been training? What have you been practicing? And... I bet you most of these guys probably don't want to tell you what they've been doing because right. they don't want to give away the it's, secret. But well, I, I just say, just for the for the rest of us, there's there's always that Serena out there, or there's always that Osaka out there. There's always that player, and it's all relative. No, no matter what level you're at, you know, if you're a four zero guy, there's someone in your age group who just seems to dominate, seems right. to be the best player in that in that you know, little area, wherever you are. And there's going to come a time. There's going to come a time when all of a sudden you find yourself where you go, oh my God, if I just win three more points, right? I can win the match. And, and you might lose one of those, but you've got to, just like what you described Kenna did today, Yeah, you've got to consciously choose. Right. And she, without a doubt, she consciously chose. Yes. I mean, you could I tell you, if you get to see the match, you get down to the, the last one, the first match point, she loses it. You watch her because they, they do a close up on her. Right. And she you can see her make the mental choice to move back to a positive direction right. and back to business. The way she was conducting herself um, was all business. Right. And so there was no, you know, That's it didn't cool. it didn't last. But but a brief little facial expression almost. And then it was over. Right. You know, right. she was Good. on, you know, so it was really, it was impressive. Yeah. I thought that was the most impressive part of it actually. You know? Well, cool. Well, listen guys, um, I hope you enjoyed today's, uh, short to the point episode. Uh, and you know, listen, I mean, it's, I, no one's got the magic bullet. No one's got the, you know, the nugget they're going to pull out of your pocket and, and say, here's, here's confidence for you. You know, 
give me 97 bucks and I'll, you know, package it with a bunch of bonuses for you. Um, you're going to have to actually go out and figure out how to do this on your own. And I think that there are a lot of pros out there that we can copy and model just by their behavior after a point. And, right. and they just, they just choose to be confident. I, I, you know, for lack of a better term, they just make that choice. I mean, they could, and maybe at some point in their career, they, I mean, you look at some of these guys who are, who've been journeymen for 10 years on the tour. They're now 28 years old. And right. finally, they've decided, I'm going to choose to be confident, and they start winning. Next thing you know is they're, right. you know, they're, they're winning tournaments. They're getting deep into these, uh, into these Masters events. You right. know, they're, they're, they're kind of scary to you know, some of the top players in, in the Grand Slams. Yeah. And, Every, well, everybody's been kind of like watching these guys going, God, if this guy really believed in himself, he'd be, he'd be scary on the court. And now all of a sudden, then, then one of them emerges, you know, I right. thought it was great um, to see Mahout go three rounds. That was fantastic. Absolutely. That he and his, you know, it was just, it was brilliant. Some great tennis that he played and you can see his enjoyment of the competition, just totally, you know, embracing, you know, kind of the, the, the long shot opportunity to play, you know, well, I mean, you, you know, obviously, and here's, and here's a guy who has grand slam doubles titles and, you know, he's a brilliant doubles player and obviously he's just a fabulous tennis player, but the single side, he's kind of, he's, you know, he's definitely moved into being a double specialist. And, but to see him out there and go three rounds at, at, at the French is like, you know, massive. That's cool. You know? That's cool. All right, guys. Well, listen, uh, just a quick reminder. I can't remember if I mentioned it at the top of the call today or the top of the episode. Uh, Jeff and I are offering a free, private, 10-minute coaching call. Three of us get in the phone. We talk about that number one thing in your game right now that might be holding you back. It could be that one little mental, that little thing. We just got to make a little quick mindset shift. And who knows? You might just start taking off and uh, start start beating your your Serena or your Osaka, whoever that, whoever that top player is in your group. Guys, the way to get on that phone, go to goldballhunting.com, drop in a first name and email address, click the button, and you'll get access to our online calendar scheduler. If you're already on our email list, well done. And yeah. any email you get from this somewhere in there, there's a link that will take you to that calendar scheduler. Um, so click it, and let's, uh, let's, let's get on a call together. Uh, Jeffrey? The stage is yours, my man. Like us, share us, please subscribe. Let us know what you think down below. Very smooth, very smooth, very confident. I think you kind of chose to be confident on that right there. I did, I chose today. Yeah, because, you know, there have been other times when it's kind of like you're a little unsure. Yeah, unsure. what comes first? Well, you're unsure. Liking or sharing? Well, you're just unsure if you want them to like us or if you want them to share us. Because this episode... Am I worthy? <laughs> Am I worthy of being liked? That's right. <laughs> Yeah. All right, uh, guys, get out there today. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Jeff, we're going to do this again tomorrow. Gosh darn it, I can't wait.